emotionally. Right. So, and I, and I, you know, I agree. <laughs> I agree because I think it's a spiritual battle going on all the time. But I, mm-hmm. I, I do kind of want to want to like X. Like, do you think like people can be under attack and not know it? Like they're like they may not recognize the signs or see what's going on in their life, but they could be under some sort of spiritual attack directly from whatever kind of source of being or just something that just doesn't have their best interest at heart like do you think somebody can mm-hmm. be involved in that and not even know that they're involved in it oh yes oh yes okay. and one way that i see that happening is and what we call generational trauma generational curses that kind of thing mm-hmm. you can be born into an energy that is not the highest and best, and I don't want to get too far off. Um, that's a whole thing right there, <laughs> coming into this world and who who you're coming through and all of that. Yeah. So, to me, it's a lot about what you're consciously aware of, because in my, from my personal perspective, the the contract that we make to get here. Once we get here, most of it, if not all of it, is unconscious. Mm. And a lot of people say that the reason that is, is because if we remembered everything that we decided we were going to do, then we may not do it. Okay. And some things we need to do. But... By the same token, I firmly believe that people should study themselves. And I believe we find our contract in our astrology charts. Mm. And as we know ourselves, like I know some things about me and my chart and I'm like, "Mm -hmm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I know I gotta keep my attitude in check because my Mars is in Aries. That explained a lot when I learned that. I was like, "Oh, okay." And, and seeing that, I, I'm not. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm, I'm clueless, like when it comes to. But you can help people understand that stuff. Like you can share that information with people. Yeah, you, you I'm not an astrologer. I will say that I'm not an astrologer, but but I know some stuff, and I know a lot about my own chart. And I definitely encourage people to get their astrology charts and at least learn like the basics. But if somebody come up to me or get in the conversation with me and tell me that their Mars is in Aries, I'm going to say, child, let's be meditating. Okay. Let's, let's be journaling. Let's get these feelings out in a constructive manner. (laughs) Because I know that person can fight, ain't going to back down from a fight and all of that. I, I know that energy. Right, which also though makes a great spiritual warrior or could, but it's all in once you do know certain things, then you can use it in the in a better way. Yeah, that's um, where I was going. That's where I was going. That's where I thought mm-hmm. that was going in my mind. That's where it was. Mm-hmm. It's like you can you know what's going on, and it helps you on your journey. It helps you right. strengthen yourself spiritually by knowing these things that you, just knowing about it, it it'll help you on your way, kind of thing. Yeah, because therein lies a lot of healing right there. Because this is how a lot of us get into situations where we could get attacked because we don't know ourselves. And Mm -hmm. a lot of negative forces, they know who we are before we do. Okay, this could be a situation. Now, me, I could have had some situations, experiences with somebody, some being in, quote unquote, another life. And they could be coming back to get me, to get revenge, right? Mm-hmm. So, bam, I show up in this life and I show up in a family that's not peaceful, This just dramatic traumatic whatever 
And so when we show up in experiences like that and that and we're um, conceived in that energy and and born into that energy and raised into that energy. Anytime we are in those situations, even though they may not be comfortable, they're comfortable. You right. may not like it, but it's familiar. Yeah. So we may not even recognize the negativity, the abuse by something or someone else because it's what we've been doing the whole time. Right. So it takes it could take a certain experience to trigger something. It could take us meeting somebody, running across a book or anything that give us some piece of enlightenment because what we're going to do, no matter what we deal with, our contract is our contract, right? And even though I may have decided to come through a very interesting, familiar, familiar situation. I also know subconsciously that I'm a healer, that I'm the queen of forces. So that part of me is going to make sure I run into somebody to trigger that so I can mm -hmm. get on that path too. And then all the other crap that I've gone through can be very purposeful because I can alchemize those experiences and heal myself and other people. So everything has a purpose. But knowing yourself is really what healing is all about. Beginning to know yourself. It's not, voila, I'm going to. And then you don't have any problems. You don't have any responsibility. All is well. Yeah, it don't work like that. You finna cry, cuss, <laughs> all kind of stuff. Yeah. For some real deep healing. Okay. Now it could be easier and harder for certain things, certain people. Not everybody's healing experience is going to be the same either because everybody's got their own thing going on. Everybody has their own contract going on. And which is why we see so many different things in people's lives now. Like that's another thing that helps me alchemize. You know, my Jupiter is in Gemini. I'm going to get rescued because I've been real good and real generous some other lifetimes. I ain't just generous now. I've been that way. Right. I've been a loving, generous person. So that energy followed, that energy followed me too. Yeah, so great. yes, I can be under attack and not know it because of certain programming from other negative experiences that may not have been my direct responsibility in the physical realm. But something's going to happen, especially if you're a healer. Something's going to happen to help you get to where you need to be. So some of us don't see that as easily, may not have that experience so quickly. But in their contract, too, it's a book, it's a person or somebody. And I'm, I might be that person to show up for them right. and say, it. Wake up, it's time to do something different here. Yeah, let's start alchemizing, you know, like you being attacked, big guy. Um, and it's very delicate sometimes to deal with that because we do have a lot of people who will tell people, Oh, you under spiritual attack, somebody's got 13,050 hexes on you, and you need <laughs> five thousand dollars a day for seven days, you know, to get it off. Right. So that can be very delicate to deal with because there are also a lot of um, people who have abilities and some don't have none, really, but they can pose as they do. And some people who are really, really searching can get caught up in that because they really want the help. Right. So for me... And I know I'm probably going in all different directions. No, um, it's, it's great. You know, <laughs> with this little spiel I'm like, giving you. I am cool. With luck. Yeah, I don't know. You see, I got a pit in my head. So you can talk as <laughs> much as you want. <laughs> but it's just, um, it's being a healer is a, is a responsibility. So for those who are playing games with it and using people and abusing people, 
who really are trying to get some help, man, they got a price to pay. They got a price to pay, and I do not feel sorry for them whatsoever. Yeah, and that's is that that's that's karmic energy that's gonna make his way around, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, because that that's. I just want to be sure if I was recognizing what you were speaking of, because it's 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 some people that. <clears throat> yeah, it's a lot of people walking around um, under attack and don't know it. Okay. Um, and they may just think you know they have bad luck or they there's just no hope because their life may have been just so bad and and they just can't change and da 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 da. da. Um. But that's not true for most people. Mm. Now, I do also think that there's some energies that come here in physical bodies and their whole mission is to be negative and they mm. won't change because they don't. And you know, some people, a lot of people in my line of work, they don't want to hear that being said because it could sound like this, um, that's hopelessness or whatever. But I think we have to really take a look at things. And and again, everything ain't peaches and cream over here in the spiritual realm. It's it's yeah, just yeah, not. Right. It's just right. not. Um, especially for those of us who are warriors you know everybody's not a warrior and we all have our own places on the chessboard you know and we have to do what we have to do so some of us are meant to fight in certain ways and some of us are not and there's some energies that like i'm coming here to f some stuff up that's my whole mission right just <laughs> come to finish it off and mm -hmm okay and so yeah there's everybody ain't really some people come to you they don't really want help they're really they're coming to try to kill you sometimes mm. that that's mm. a thing there are vampires that show up like oh i'm helpless i need some help blah 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 and they're really trying to just suck the life out you you know, but I'm pretty sure yes. people that yeah, were, I could, yeah, because that could take us somewhere. Because I think I yes. recognize the situations like that, and, and people around me, like I don't know, you. Everybody wants the positive person around them, or just or me. I, I don't like negativity. I'd rather people around me be mm -hmm. positive. We can try to help each other grow or share some knowledge or some kind of information or something. Mm -hmm. But it. it I, I see what people come through and, and they can offer all kinds of pretty gifts, but it's the, the bad, the bad energy that comes with it. That pulls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that was something that's, I kind of, I kind of noticed before, but and just speaking a little bit, and I said, I was taking notes and stuff too, but a little bit earlier, you, you mentioned just how having to make things happen, you know, with how, how you was, you know, just putting it out there. You, you told your son, you know, go bring me a check out the mailbox. Mm -hmm. like, and he did on more than one mm -hmm. occasion. So, like, how do you feel about about children and metaphysics and about how, like, how old do you think kids are when they can be able to, you know, need some guidance or, or, or somebody with some experience to help them understand some things that they could be possibly dealing with? Or is that, do you think that's, something that's that happens or that's available or just how do you feel about children and, and about spirituality and about responsibility and understanding that type of stuff man listen we need to start from day one from before day one from inception these children, especially the ones coming in now, they are ready. They are ready. And like I was saying early, we have energies, technologies, all kinds of things ready for them to take them in a different direction. So if if we don't start from day one with what we're trying to do, 
for positivity, for healing, for growth. Somebody getting them. Right. And you know, is, and I, go ahead. Uh, excuse me, I didn't. I didn't mean to, but I, I seen. I seen some stuff. Like I, I watch some some different things sometimes, and I seen a guy saying that um when 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 we come when we're when we're birth, I guess when we pass through the water to get back here, we're kind of closer to what. But but it's such a shock. We're closer to who we are spiritually then than we are throughout most of our life because immediately we're, we got this culture shock to deal with no matter where you know we came from or you know whatever it's just when it happens it happens so fast and can't communicate with anybody nobody around us understands so we're trying to figure out how to get this thing to, so we lose and then we start putting the bad stuff in our bodies and you know we kind of lose we get further and further away from our spirituality which is what is what is <laughs> you know but it's it, it how we just gotta find it. so that's why i was asking about the kids like do you think so, the sooner like you said is is a good idea for us to pay attention to our children and, and to these beings that are here to help us because we all have a position we all have a role like how, how do you think or do you help with being able to make connections like that with what yes, I could talk about this. I could, ooh, I could talk about this. I call it the psycho spiritual wellness of children. And I work a lot with my own children. I work with other people's children. And I am going to be working with more families and children, particularly mothers and children, and especially pregnant mothers and children. Because, mm -hmm. again, from day one, the medical people could tell you right now. Your well-being while you're pregnant affects your child for the rest of their life. Good, bad, or indifferent. Right. You need to eat healthy. You don't need to be stressed and all of that stuff, right? So when they come to for another thing, like they're very vulnerable, which is why in many cultures there are certain rituals done. They wear children, they put bracelets or anklets on babies, do certain things to protect their energy because they are so close still to the spiritual realm. Right. And for example, we hear the story every year about the birth of this baby they called Jesus. Mm How -hmm. Herod was after him day one. I was like, oh, we got to get in him. Right. Because it was already been told, homeboy finna come shake some things up. And, and that's the one right there. And he was like, no, Neo, we got to get knock Neo out. We can't have Neo coming mm -hmm. in. Right. We can't do this. You know, we're trying to take him out. That's a thing. There's entities, that's like I was saying earlier, there's entities that know who you are before you know who you are. And they're yeah. trying to make sure you don't get to know who you are. So that's going on. So we need children being taught their spiritual power, how to protect themselves. So is uh, how, how would you, how would you, I'm not asking, how would you suggest inviting the kid? But it, I, I don't know, me in a, in a way, I think sometimes I wanted to ask you like, how, how long have you um like been reading tarot cards and understanding tarot cards or oh, and then and now on top of that like i was wondering like is that something that would be a way to introduce spirituality to a younger mm -hmm. human mm -hmm. versus a, a more mature spiritual being yeah oh yes i hope that question was too no, my children we doing what I be doing. Okay. And sometimes they don't want to do it. Yes, you is. Surely is. You finna come right here with me at this altar. Right. Like one of them, he's in charge of this altar, feeding these folks and all of that. The other one, you come over here, you're gonna do this. Um, this right here, my first deck of cards. You could probably this little worn box. You know, we got some little situations here. My first deck 
That's that's that throwback. That's the authentic. That classic. Just call me now. Okay. Hey, call me now. <laughs> I paid a dollar for that deck for this deck of cards. Oh, really? 20 years, 20 years ago. Wow. Or 19 years ago. Something like still that. Still got them. Yes. And because I was like, you know, growing up, I was always kind of interested in stuff. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, shoot, it was a store called the Mighty Dollar. It didn't mm -hmm. last long, I think a couple of years. And um, I wish I had bought all the ones they had now. But right. so I still use this the same deck. And I have my children read me. When we do fam. We just did a uh, family healing ritual two days ago. We all read each. Everybody got their own little cards. Then we did a group reading, you wow. know, for our, you know, stuff coming up right now. So I keep my children involved, and they ask questions. I answer their questions to the best of my ability to their understanding, and if anything. If you can't do anything else, just let them watch you do stuff. Right. If your, your feel like, kid, there's a few years in, in the, the ages of your kids, so they yes, everybody learns even differences in our age, everybody learns a different way. So some people mm -hmm. I'm like more of a visual learner myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. So if you could show me I could do it while I'm watching you do it and I can do mm -hmm. it now. I'm done, I'm off with it. Mm -hmm. But you, you are you saying that like showing, just letting them see and be around and experience it is kind of the same thing. With kids. Yeah, if nothing else, because it's like you know, children. Uh, they always say this: children are like sponges. Okay, yeah. that's why they say, "Oh, play uh, Mozart and Beethoven while the baby's little to go to sleep, whatever." Because there's different frequencies. You're programming them already. Okay, right. and I have this. This is my perspective too of perception. I think that until at least at least the age of two, maybe three, but you know how when babies are born and we have what they call in our head a soft spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see that as, you know, that's our crown. And we're not really fully connected to this earthly realm until two, three years old. That's my personal thing, right? Once that soft spot closes up and it gets hard, then it's like, okay, I'm here now. I'm going to stick with this shit for a while. You know, <laughs> I'm going to see what this is about a little bit longer here, you know. Um, and so that's why you have to take care of it. It's very tender. Again, that leads lends to the vulnerability of babies and toddlers, you know, and all of these you know, what some people term terrible tools and this and this and that. I truly feel like a lot of that has to do with spiritual stuff. You know, gosh, this world is crazy. Do I really want to be here? I got to learn. Like crazy. Look at them. Why did I do this? You know? Oh my God. Yeah, you know, it kind of makes sense when you say it like that. Too. Yeah, like this is what I'm going to be doing. Look at this lady. She don't even know what she's doing. No, I don't like it. No, no I don't want like, it. Oh my gosh. Take it back. So, right. you know, children, they can um, they can pour libation at the altar. They can learn to meditate. And it's not hard. See, the sooner we incorporate this into their lives, the easier it is for them to do and and, and have it within them for a long time. Like, as they say, um, teach a child the way he ought to go when he's old, he won't depart. Right. That means I programmed them. They ain't gonna forget this. But the, I mean, that would be more of a programming in the way they could think of on, on the level that allows them to better themselves in the right. situations and the environment surrounding them. Like being, right. being a spiritual being, kind of, you can change. I mean, you were speaking about alchemists earlier. Like, I, I, I be on some different stuff in my mind. It was, it was a while ago, but I was walking. You know, just taking my little spring, little walk, whatever, doing whatever I was doing. I said, I need to blow my nose really bad. 
I came around the corner and uh, you know I just walked around the corner and I I'm not I can't make this up. Mm -hmm. There was a stack, a neatly folded stack of three napkins just kind of laying against the curb when I came around the corner. But the, my allergies were bad because I was out walking doing exercise, mm -hmm. and I said I needed the paper towel. I actually took a video of it and showed it after it happened because it got, you know, stuff like that happens, but. I never get a chance to express it to anybody and have an opportunity to talk to you. I get to say some of that stuff and hearing some of the stuff you speak, you know, it kind of, you know, solidify some things in my mind that like, you know, I might, I might have a little bit of reason to, to learn a little bit more about being the powerful being that I am mm -hmm. and, and who better to turn to, to ask my questions than your highness. <laughs> Reverend Queen Weech. I still wanted to know some more stuff if it was I uh, if you had I don't know how long you was gonna allow me to sit with you. I did, Go ahead. I, I'm I, I, okay, I did just kind of I I did write some questions down. Okay. But I wasn't really trying to do it because you speak so freely, like you're open about the information that you have and you're sharing mm -hmm. and you want people to reach out to you to be able to, you know, help people. Cause I guess that's one of the, the biggest things that we, I think, I believe we all supposed to help each other. Like, what? I don't. I really don't see a purpose in life if you're just gonna be negative and if you're gonna try to tear somebody or something down, and especially something that you didn't create or build. It has nothing to do with you. If you can't help it, then you should leave it alone. But, but you are in such an amazing position that you can help people. You can help people heal. You can heal people. Like that's that's a certain type of power that. You know, it takes a lot for anybody to be able to stay in the the to have the strength to be able to do that type of stuff. But I did want to ask, <clears throat> excuse me, if there was, do you have like a really really big? Not, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want it to sound like that. But what what is your most memorable? spiritual lesson that you think you've learned so so far on your on your journey mm. well without describing the specific um details i will say the for this one experience that i'm thinking of because Oh, this was a big one. But the lesson I learned out of it was to follow my intuition and listen to my spirit team. They will not lead me wrong and not listening to them, not listening to my gut always messes me up. Always messes me up. Like, Mm. This one, I won't go into it right now, but I'm going to share this in one day. There's this one experience that happened 20, 22 years ago. I knew it wasn't sensible for me to be doing this, but I decided I was going to do it anyway. And I was on my way to do it. And Everything within me was like, no, don't, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Just do something else. Just do something else. I stopped by one of my cousins' house, I believe, and I don't think she was home. And I was like, well, she ain't home. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead. This was, I think, the first. Well, maybe not the first time, but one of those few times in my life where I actually heard my spirit team. This particularly, my grandma Nitty. Yeah. speaking to me where I could hear it audibly outside myself like I'm hearing you yeah. telling me not to go not to do this you know what I did you went yeah I turned the music up in the car trying to drown out the sound like a damn fool that's what I did really yes Right. And I went on and did what they told me not to do. <clears throat> and that was the wrong thing. 
<laughs> Trust me, I suffered, I suffered, and I suffered. I don't and know, but suffer some more. To turn to turn the music up so you wouldn't hear it. Like mm -hmm. that that got my mind going somewhere. Like I, okay, well I I did I I you know had an audible recently. Mm -hmm. But even if it wasn't the first time, I don't think I'd have tried to drown it out by anything. I'd have been a little more curious. But that but you know it, you're more familiar, yeah, I suppose, but that was a long time ago. So yeah. you've, been, you've been you've been getting messages and and being mm -hmm. guided and walked with and for a long a long time. That's a long time. Yeah, and it was. I'm telling you, I suffered, and and it also reminds me though too of how loved we are hmm. for her to show up that strongly you know like okay well you're not listening to your gut you're not listening to the whispers let me hear me holler at you uh -huh. she had just been gone for a year and something at that time because mm -hmm. she passed away um in the year 2000 at the top of the year so this was just over a year and some change a few months after so she is like, hello, <laughs> don't go. What's wrong with you? Yeah. you crazy. Yeah. And, you know, that's a lot of love. Yeah. That's a lot of love. And I rejected it. And, and so it was to process me basically telling my big mama to kiss my grits, you know, is what I did. Yeah. You know, that's very disrespectful. Yeah. And so I had to suffer for that. And you turn against yourself, you have to suffer for that. And you turn against those who have your best interests at heart and who are only trying to love you, you suffer for that. And at the same time, again, it was still grace throughout the years that helped me through a lot of situations. And again, that one day changed, uh, well, I don't know if I said this before, but that one day really changed the trajectory of my life. But it also led me into some of those situations where I had to alchemize mm -hmm. and create something out of seemingly nothing. So even through all of it, the grace still was there to get me to learn and grow. And a, a tough lesson, but you you learned it. But you turn the you turn the music up so you could, wouldn't have to hear. <laughs> like that was gonna work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I still can't. I don't know. I still can't. It didn't work, but I was dumb enough to try it. Wow. Well, oh, I was dumb enough to try it. But but. You know, but still, you said if we don't listen to us, if we don't believe in ourselves, if we don't listen to, you know, when when we're being guided and we're being helped along the way, and when we're being shown love, like it seems to me, I don't know, but it just seems like <clears throat> it would take it takes a lot of work for for somebody to show you that they care about you and want to want to help you along the way in the right way. Mm -hmm. And and to be able to have that connection is something. Like it it is. I really don't have it's it. I really don't have the words a lot of times mm -hmm. to say how some of the experiences that I've had make me feel still to this day. But being able to speak with you about it is, you know, it's, it it helps me to understand some stuff. And it's still like a lot of people that have a lot more questions than they probably would have done a better job at, at being in your presence and hearing from you. I didn't I didn't I don't know how long you allowed us to uh, to be together to to, to speak. <laughs> and excuse me. But you know from some of the stuff we went over is uh, uh, I've seen some of your um can you say where we can see some of your stuff at oh yes 
I'm um, I'm on Instagram at Queen of Forces Heels. I'm at Queen of Forces Heels, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Threads as well. Um, although that's fairly new. Yeah, um, I don't know mainly, what that is. Yeah, it's an Instagram app, but mainly Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. You can find me there. Um, you can email me at queenofforces at gmail.com. Also, I have been working on some other things that will be coming out very soon. We've got some more classes coming up in the fall. Um, I just finished up. My last tarot class was um, July 16th, I think it was our last day. And we're coming up, getting ready to announce a fall class, some other spiritual classes coming up. And like I said, won't be too long. We're going to be doing some stuff with um, children and families that I'm so excited about. And if you don't mind, I would like to talk about the children a little bit more. There's something that's been on my um, very heavily and reminded me of, girl, you better come on and get this stuff together for these children and families because back to the children um, understanding themselves and you know nurturing their spiritual gifts is very important because a lot of children now are more and more sensitive and there's so many children coming into again families that have a lot of going on a lot of stuff going on that may be toxic or unhealthy. And so there needs to be some something somewhere that children can see and watch where somebody can find something to say, hey, let this child listen to this. Just like I love think the channels on YouTube, Jules TV, Grace's Corner. No, they ain't paying me to say this, but you know, you can put that on. Even for parents who don't even want to pay attention, like when I was little, you can sit me in front of the TV, living my Sesame Street. I'm about to learn how to spell, count, do something, right? right. Yeah. And so we have again all this technology. Usually, what's in the screens in front of these screens for these little children are there's a lot of violence, it's sexuality, it's stuff that they don't even need to be um, learning about right. at that age. And so, if parents are going on their healing journey, and then they start to share with their children, teaching children protection rituals so that they can be safe in their environments, especially if they're highly sensitive, again, which most of them are. They're coming in with some out of this world gifts because mm -hmm. they're all coming from out of this world. So they have a lot of abilities, but they get squelled or they're being channeled in negative ways. We have things in this world like what was being called minor attracted people who think it's okay to be sexually attracted to a child. Right. And there's so many other things like that going on in the world where children are becoming less and less protected. And then you have some people saying, oh, parents don't have any rights so it's being becoming out of balance in so many ways you know so if children are able to learn these ways to energetically protect themselves because from an adult they're very vulnerable adult is going to be physically stronger than them of course it's going to be easy for them to get hurt and harmed confronting somebody like that but if they know how to do protection rituals at a young age, they know how to affirm, they know how to pray affirmatively. And backing up again, I was also um, director of affirmative prayer ministry and member of healing ministry in a unity congregation in Durham, North Carolina. So I have a lot of experience with that too. And I am teaching my children to pray some people say, again, that it's too young to teach. Children are too young to understand metaphysics. No, they're not. No, they're not. It's all about how you word things. There's books out there now um, that children can get from the libraries that talks about metaphysics. 
the way you talk about scripture and different things is you got churches teaching children stuff all the time. Church in the school. So, yeah, they go to school all the time being indoctrinated by something. Right. So we as parents have a responsibility to teach them to learn who they are spiritually, who what they came here to do and how to protect themselves because they're not going to be in our physical eyesight 24-7 for their entire life. Right. And right. even if they are, they still have their own spiritual journey. So children learning meditation, spirit energy healing, uh, they can learn all of that. They can naturally do all of it most of the time. We're right. just Basically, like, here to guide them to make sure they use it in in a positive manner and make sure they're taking care of themselves, all that kind of stuff. But it's if we, the younger we start, really the easier it is, right? Because they come here ready already, right? Because they they're older than us spiritually. When they get here, we we dumb them down with the the living here. I guess if that's the thing. Yes. Like, yes, we hear all the time, especially coming from the South, that, you know, people have old souls. I believe all of my children are older than me. Yeah, especially. I believe yeah. all of them older than me. Now, that poses some challenges as well. Um, But they, sometimes they got to be reminded. But, hey, you, you asked me to be your mama, so I'm here. So you got to listen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You decided to be a child this time, and, and I'm the mama. So there it is. Um, yeah. But yeah, especially my oldest child. Like, he's so old. He is so old. Oh, my goodness. But they they need it. They really, really need it. Because something is going to get there. Like you said, if they're going to public school, the school is going to get them. The church is going to get them. The the gang is going to get somebody. Some, the television. Something's going to get them, whether we like what's getting them or not. But something's going to get them. The television can get them. They can tell. Yes. The television can tell them a vision that takes our yes. children, on, or you know, those beings on on another ride that we don't want them to go on. But it's you know, I, I, it's hard to make decisions when you don't. Well, it's easy to make decisions. But it's not healthy to make decisions when you don't have all the information. And who's right. to say that you have all the information when you're living your what you think is your regular normal life day to day, not knowing that all the spiritual stuff is going on around us and not being able to be in tune or pick up to it mm -hmm. and not have the protection and being able to teach kids, as you just said, mentioned, teaching kids how to, you know, protect themselves in certain situations and, and against certain principles. I just think this spirituality is really powerful and having somebody like your know, highness to be able to share with us and help us kind of get there is, is a blessing to me and it's an opportunity that i'm proud to have and i appreciate you for talking to me and helping me understand a little bit more it's, it's a lot of other stuff that you know i've experienced or seen and i didn't maybe at a later time if you let me get back on with you again i can yes. ask you some of those questions and maybe share some of the stuff i've been through but i was hoping I, I the people that you know that you allow to hear this if they know that they can reach out to you and it, it's never too early and it's never too late like we all go through things and, and experiencing things because that's why i started opening up to you because i was experiencing some things that i couldn't understand like hey let me see if there's somebody get me figure this out <laughs> and i'm glad you you are able to and i'm glad that you're able to help as many people as as you can as you you know if you have the energy to do that with and i don't i didn't i didn't anticipate keeping you this long but i appreciate you speaking to me and I guess we can talk whenever you get another chance. I know you're busy. I know you got some classes you're trying to work on to get get back to do some more classes. Did, can you mention that again before you? Um... Yes. Um, I'm about to announce a new tarot class and some basic classes of what I would call spiritual hygiene. 
spirituality mm. one on one, I guess you could say, because what I'm finding is there are a lot of people who are now interested in spirituality, interested in um, ancestral reverence and that kind of thing, who are, I guess you're considered new to it. And there's a lot of stuff out here, but at the end of the day, it's the basics that's keeping us going. Yeah. And so I'm actually, today, I was just having like this conversation with myself and my spirit team, like, hmm, I gotta think, do I really want to offer this next tarot class now? Or should I just go with the, the spiritual, um, spirituality course? Because yes, you can learn to read tarot, but I teach tarot from a healing perspective. I'm a tarot healing specialist. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, you know, my tarot classes aren't just, oh, memorize the cards and tell me when I'm going to get rich. Just, no. <laughs> no. No, I like that. <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, of course, we can, money can come up. Money is a part of life. That's earth energy. But we, we're going to use these to help you get to what's going on in there, around here, rather. Because, we, you know, we're not inside our body. Our body is inside us. But, um. Mm. We're gonna use these messages, images, symbols to help us heal some stuff, uh, some real stuff, you know. Don't, because I take, trust me when I say, my terror ain't no joke, and I take offense to people acting like it's not this is serious <laughs> business over here. Right. I'm not. I am a tarot healing specialist in everything I do. Several healing specialists. Several healing specialists. Everything I do is involved in healing. Well, I'm teaching a class, whether I'm mentoring somebody, whether I am doing some mental wellness workshops, because I do those too. Um, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm doing a, a vow renewal, <laughs> if I'm doing a whatever it is, is healing yeah. is involved. Right, so, is it so so can people like directly link with you for tarot healing yes um if people go to my instagram i have a link tree there and i think it's on youtube as well um there's a link there to my calendar which is updated periodically this past week i had more availability than i'm having so people when you see a slide you need to grab it because also oh i should mention this yeah, in celebration and in honor of the blue moon at the end of the month i've been offering uh, my tarot healing sessions for half off another term i used to describe them are divination investigations uh, all right. You're going up in your soul, trying to see what's going on up in there. Okay. Hey, okay. You never heard that. I like that so yes. much. Yes. Yeah. So I have decided to offer those for um, a half price of the investment for those. So people need to book now between between now and August 31st. So I'm going to be updating my calendar again this week. People can also email me again at queenofforces at gmail.com if you would like. Um, an investigation done but you don't see a time available i can record it and email it to you or we may be able to set up a, a time just for you and i you know so even if you don't see anything on the calendar still reach out we can figure it out there's more than one way to get it done and, and what is it again what, a divination investigation mm -hmm. that is i like that yeah I, I, and i take well it was yours so I like it. <laughs> I like it. So I again, you email me at queen of forces at gmail.com. Go to my link tree on Instagram. And um, there's a link there to the YouTube to um, donations. You can make a donation to the ministry. If it's a dollar, do a dollar challenge. We could do a dollar challenge. Hey, right. Yeah. Um, if it's prayer, if it's positive energy, send that. Because this yeah. work is no joke. I need support yeah. as well. Um, but I am available now. If you do DM me on Instagram, if anybody DMs me on Instagram, 
you know, even if it is an email, give me 24 to 48 hours to get back to you. I prefer emails over DMs. Um, yeah. But I know sometimes people have to get in with it. Hey, if it's on their mind right then, it might just be easy to go to my inbox and, and say something. So just um, if they do that, give me a couple of days to follow through and, and we'll connect. But if it's meant for me 